Welcome back to the Repair-a-thon series for these K7000s. This is going to be number five in the series of five. Now, normally this would just be deemed a parts chassis, but I want to try and tackle it uh, and try and do a two, two-fold type of thing going on here. So all this stuff you see over here, I'm going to put aside for the moment, and we'll get to that shortly. I'm going to, well, it stuck to the mat there. Put that aside. Okay. So before we go too in, into too much detail as to what all this is, uh, let's talk about the actual chassis. So normally I would just deem this a parts chassis because so much stuff is missing and there's so many issues. So let's go over the issues that I see right off the bat. I have cleaned this already and I have zip tied the harness over here to keep the stress and strain relief off of the wires themselves so they don't break off. But going through this and looking, I noticed that the horizontal hold pot is smashed and broken. Uh, the wires for the power input are cut off completely. Don't know why someone would do that. We have uh, the screw here for the HOT heatsink is missing. The voltage regulator is loose and the insulator is not even the right type of insulator. This is the, well, the right type, but it's the, this is the insulator for the wide, the fat one. And someone has installed a tall skinny uh, regulator and they didn't change out the insulator to the correct one. This is for the fat wide one so that's I don't even know why they would do that. I'm sure it would work just fine the way that it is but it, the voltage regulator is also loose on there. That's another problem. Fuse is missing. C38 is missing. C69 and C36 are missing. The two safety caps in there. Uh, what else? I think that might be it looking at this thing. Uh, yeah, well, no, someone has removed R92, and obviously the flyback's gone as well. Uh, R91, I'm sorry, R91 resides right in there, R92 is right here, R91 is deep inside there next to the, uh, I think that is C40, yeah, C40. So someone has re removed R91, the flyback, C36, C69, C38. Uh, missing screw, cut wires, smashed H hole pot, uh, unsecure voltage regulator, wrong insulator, all kinds of stuff. So normally this would just be a parts chassis. Oh, and missing fuse. But I want to try and end up with five for five here. So the last thing that's also missing is the neck board. There is no neck board. The wire, the harness here that's hardwired to the chassis is still here, but the one that disconnects that goes with the neck board is gone. So we're going to have to use a parts chassis that I have in the closet over here to acquire this harness here. Uh, and then last but not least, the remote board is also missing. But I've got some of these on hand. That's not going to be a problem. So I have everything on hand I need to be able to kind of put this back together and then test. So that's going to be done here later. I need to go through off camera and get a, a parts chassis, maybe a couple of them, and find all the parts I need. I have a flyback that is used. I'm trying to think here if it's down this way. Okay. Uh, yes, I have one that is used that I pulled off a chassis that I thought had a flyback problem. I, at some point in the past, I worked on a 7000 that had uh, I thought had a flyback problem. So I put in a new one in a new one in and it didn't fix the problem, so I just left the new one in. So I have on hand here a working original one and I want to use this working original one here. So this is what I want to use to put back on here in place of a brand new one because since this one is working, uh, it might be more reliable than the new one because the new ones are you know a gamble whether or not they work out of the box. I had one out of the box. I took one out of a brand new one out of a box. I got, I got a shipment of six of them. I got a brand new shipment of six of the 7,000 flybacks and uh, one of them I used on a previous repair. I can't recall which one it was. It might have been one that I didn't do a video on now that I think about it, but I turned it on and the first power up, I heard a little cr arcing and cracking. I thought, well, that's what is that? So I turned the lights out and no sooner did I do that, the entire thing cracked open on the side and just arced to the frame. So uh, the first initial power up after putting it in, it cracked and arced to the frame. So there's no guarantee that a brand new one's gonna last any longer or be any better than an original factory one. So we're gonna use an original factory one to put in here. And then I also have to go through and find all the missing parts from donor chassis that are actual donor chassis and uh, find all the parts and come back and start working on this later. But for now, 
the reason I want to get this one back to life, even though it's missing all so many parts, is because I have to test this uh, replacement neck board. So it just so happens that this fifth and final 7000 is missing a neck board, and I have to test these replacement neck boards from Peter at Arcade Parts and Repair. So we're going to be using this this uh, this chassis to do a test on these replacement neck boards. Now this is the CR23 version, which is the uh, nine pin socket and already off camera he sent me the seven pin CR31 which I also tested and it works great this is what it looks like after it's done being stuffed so the the, the idea behind this is let's say you have a neck board that you, you've got an existing neck board that's cracked in half or smashed or busted off or missing a, missing a corner or something you need to do you need a new neck board whatever the circumstance may be so that's where you have this that's where these come in so he sent me one with for the seven pin CR 31 and the nine pin CR 23 uh, they're referred to as 8-pin and 10-pin, but you don't count the focus pin. So if you don't count the focus pin, it's 7-pin and 9-pin. And, uh, but anyway, so this is all done, and it works perfectly out of the gate uh, with all the correct parts and pieces in there and everything done. It works just fine with no flaws. I know that I tested one of these for the Geo 7, and it turns out the soak screen for the transistors was backwards. I'm pretty sure he's got that resolved by now. But anyway, so I did test the 7-pin CR31, and it works perfectly. Ordered all the parts here to rebuild or to, to stuff this, uh, not rebuild, but to stuff and build the, the CR23 uh, one here. So, okay. So, this is going to be like a two fold video. We're going to try and get this 7000 back up and running, and we're going to do that uh, with try also testing and building up this replacement neck board. So like I say, this one came with no neck board, there's nothing. So, we have to kind of start from scratch and build a new one. So I went online and I downloaded the manual and I printed out the parts list for the neck board. Uh, the neck board, it, this says P456 neck board, which is used with the, the um, let's see, P4489. So this is what's called out for the seven pin uh, CR31. Uh, the only difference between the CR31 and the CR23 is this part of the socket. That's it. So this is what's different. Everything else that's called out here for the seven pins identical to the 25 pin. I'm sorry, the 25 inch uh, CR23. So we can use the same parts that are called out for the seven pin. Only difference is this. So we have a brand new socket and we have all of our parts right here. So the listing here, I'll put down in the description of the video the parts that are called out for all these. So for instance, uh, R1100, if you look here, R1100 is the part listing on Peter's website, Arcade Parts and Repair, and that corresponds to R213, which is a 0 0.68 ohm resistor, which on the list here is R213, 0 0.68 ohm resistor, 5% 5, 5 2 watts. So that's what this is. So I'm going to go down in the description and put a list of all these parts. Uh, everything that you're going to see me install on this neck board, I'll put a list down below. Uh, and you should be able to do this for yourself. So, again, for instance, like this here, uh, MC, MC1072 corresponds to C201C202 and C203, which is C right here, C201, C202, and C203, which are these 470 uh, picofarad. And those go uh, right here, C201, C202, and C203. So I'll put it down in the description, a list of all the part numbers and everything that you would need if you, uh, and the quantity. And so when you see that list, order everything on that list, and that should be everything that you need to put this together. And I will say that there is an exception. So I do not have a correct part number to correspond to the, the plug headers. Let's zoom in here. The plug header here which is what these are, this thing. So the headers that go in here, 
there's a header here and a header over here. I don't know what the part numbers for those are. If you actually look up this part number here, it doesn't come up with anything. So uh, it, you would, if you don't have those plug headers, like no, if you have a parts chassis, you can steal these, these headers off those. But if you don't have that and you just have to start from scratch, you can just take the wires and cut them and strip them and just solder them right in the holes. Uh, that's, I mean, that's perfectly fine. You won't be able to remove the neck board, but hypothetically, why would you really ever need to remove the neck board anyway, except for convenience of working on the main board. But so you can just solder the wires right into the holes. We're not going to be doing that here. We might have to do it on one of the harnesses, but not the other. I'll try and figure it out. Uh, but I did not have to do that on the other one for the seven pin because I actually had that, that chassis had an existing neck board. I just took the connectors out of to put in the, the new one, the, the prototype here. So. Uh, I did not have I do not have information on the correct part number for the plug header. I also do not have a, any information on the cable assembly, uh, which is what I just showed you. And then the plug V pin is for the G2 pin. So the right here where it says screen red, that's the red wire for your G2 connection. And I don't have the correct part number for the socket that goes in there. So again, you can just take the wire and solder it right in the hole. It's just going to be the easiest thing to do. So other than uh, the part number for this pin for the G2 wire and the part number for the, the headers for these two connections, that's everything I list down below will be everything you need to build and stuff this together to get it to work. Okay, uh, and there's one more thing. Before we start on this, this R1125 here, or R1125 cor corresponds to R201, R203, three R205 R210 R211 R212 so again if we look at the specs here uh, R201 is a 2.7 K ohm 5% uh, quarter watt resistor 0.25 quarter watt so that's R201 202 and 203 now down here R210 11 and 12 are 2.7 K ohm did I say K ohm up here K ohm 2.7 K ohm 10% half watt so you can use the half watt 10% in place of the 5% quarter watt and be fine. So uh, you don't need to order these specific quarter watt resistors because you can use the half watt in place of the quarter watt and be fine. So when it comes to R201, 202, 203, 2, 10, 11, and 12, you can just get these uh, put them right here, these R1125s, which are the, the half watt. Uh, for the 201, 203, 205, 210, 211, 212. So you can actually use these for all six of those locations. I want to put that out there. So you don't actually have to order the individual quarter watt and, and half watt together. The half watts will work in place of the quarter watt and be fine. So again, every, down below in the description will be a list of all this stuff. You just order everything on there and you can put this together yourself. Now these aren't going to be sold already made. They're, they're not going to be sold already stuffed. You'll have to order it. It'll get. It'll show up when you order it just like this, and you'll have to order these parts and stuff out yourself. Or if you're trying to replace one that's cracked and broken, you can just swap the parts from the cracked and broken one over to this one and not have to order any of this stuff. But if you're trying to build one from scratch, like I am, for a chassis that doesn't have a neck board at all, you'll have to order all this stuff. So uh, that all being said, we can start stuffing this. I'm gonna do it in real time here. I'm not gonna speed anything up. It may take a while. I'm gonna turn my fan on here. I am not going to speed this up. We'll do it in real time. If you want to fast forward, you can, but I want to do all this in real time so you can see how long it actually takes and what it takes to get this done. So we're going to start with the small components first. Um, I do want to mention that I did not order any of the uh, pots or this 4.7 microfarad cap in this conglomeration of parts because I already had them on hand. The pots here, I already had some of these on hand, so I didn't order them as part of the order process. And I did not order the cap uh, because I've already got enough caps here on hand. We'll grab, for instance, this one here. So, uh, all right, so, but it'll be included down below in the description. So let's start with the small components first. Let's begin with the uh, 2.7 K ohm resistors which are going to be these here and again we're going to be using six of these for 201 203 205 210 11 and 12. so we can get these out of here okay we'll start with one and let's zoom in so you can see what's going on here we are going to bend this at the edges let me break at the bend. 
and we'll put it right here. And they may not sit flat, but you can try your best here to get them to sit flat. You rotten, you dirty rotten bum. Uh, man, sometimes it's not easy being cheesy. Okay, we'll try that. So the footprint of this is just ever so slightly smaller than it should be. And it's causing this to kind of bind up as we try and get this in here to sit flat. It doesn't have to sit flat, but I'd like it to sit as close to the edges as I can, or as flat as I can, I should say. Okay, that may be about all I can do for that, which is fine. It's ever so slightly too small, or too narrow, but I think that'll work. Okay, so let's grab two more here, and we'll fold it that way and fold it that way and that was R201 this is R203 okay that one went much easier that one's actually flat okay that one went down flat mm, that Hennigan's goes down smooth and afterwards, you don't even smell. That's right, folks. I just had two shots of Hennigan's and I don't smell. And R205. There we go. 201, 203, and 205 in place. Now we gotta grab these 150 ohm resistors. And there's gonna be three of those. Those are gonna be R202, 204, and 206, which are gonna be right directly below. One, three, and five. Now these are gonna be a bit more tricky because you can see how much bigger these are compared to the footprint that's on here. So if we try and do this, these are definitely not gonna sit flat, but we can try and get them as close as possible. Okay, that's gonna be about what all we can do for that. All right. Now, uh, I could not find these resistors on Peter's website. So I had to get these from Amazon. Uh, so I'll link that down below where I got these also. They showed up in one day, so good seller, good supplier. Okay. It's not a beauty contest. If it doesn't look good, don't worry about it. No one's going to judge you. And if they do, then, you know, hey, say, hey, next time you try it then. You think I'm no good? Why don't you give it a try? Okay. All right, so there's our six resistors. And they are conveniently labeled 150 ohm, uh, 150 ohm, 150 ohm. So, um, yeah, the the, uh, the board is nicely labeled. See, 470 picofarad, uh, 150 nanofarad, uh, 0 0.01 microfarad, 4.7 microfarad. So everything is labeled. So 6.8 k, 2 watt, 2.7 k, half watt. Uh, that's what these are. These are the 2.7k half watt, but in these three positions, it's really only required to be a quarter watt. So the half watts will still work just fine. So, yep, those six are in there. Let's go ahead and get these puppies soldered in. Now, 
And the reason I wanted to build the other one first is to verify there weren't any actual issues because if we're if we're trying to repair, uh, I got solder in that hole. That's all right. If we're trying to repair this chassis, and when we get done working on it, if we have problems, uh, I want to make sure that it's not a problem with the the neck board here that we're testing because uh, I don't want to shoot myself in the foot. So I did the the seven pin version first and verified that when done correctly it has no problems so that's why I did that one first so now if we put this together properly and we have problems at the back end uh, we know it's not anything with this neck board You want to leave your iron on the pad for at least a couple seconds to allow the solder to flow down in there because these holes are pretty small. And if you want to go back after you're done and touch them up, that's perfectly fine. So let's cut these. And we're going to wait till the end. We're going to wait till the end to clean all this up, so um, I'm not going to go through here and clean it up after everything that I solder in. There's not really a reason to do that, so. And you don't have to do what I'm about to do, but I recommend it. Go back through and just touch up your joints. Just give it a little tap. Like so. Okay, now we need to clear out these holes that I filled accidentally. Alright, that was easy. Okay, and there we go. Uh, all those six resistors are soldered in. Oops. And that should be good. And you can look at the top, make sure the solder came through the holes. So, that should all be fine. Okay, now let's grab these capacitors here. These uh, C203, C203, 202, and 201 are 470 picofarad, which are these MC1072 here from Peter's site. So we can put these in here. And because of the footprint on these, I'm going to take these and bend them around like this. and put them in vertically like that. It just looks better than trying to shove them because the footprint here is not as is is narrower than the the capacitor head. So we'll just go like this and put it in like that. That's going to be the way we'll do that on all these. And I'll do them one at a time here. Ghetto superstar, that is what you are, coming from afar, reaching for the stars, run away with me to another place, we can rely on each other, uh-huh, from one corner to another, uh-huh. Drop your glasses, shake your asses, face screwed up like you're having hot flashes. <coughs> Knew I had to give you more, it's only been a year. Now I got my foot in the door, and I ain't going nowhere. It took a while to get me here, and I'm gonna take my time. Don't fight that bullshit in your ear. And let me blow your mind. Head back, winging through the traffic. Okay, that's those. 
Looking good. A little tap just to even it out. That's better. Okay, what do we want to do next? Let's go for our 0.68 resistor, which is going to be. Oh, I got to put. I'll leave those there. That's going to be this guy here, R1100, R213. This guy is going to be roughly like so. Say it ain't so, I will not go. Turn the lights off, carry me home. Now you don't have to put these flat against the board like that. I actually kind of prefer to have them lifted up ever so slightly, roughly like that. Oh, crap. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay. Now, I gotta see if I can do it like this so we don't push it. Ah! <laughs> push it down is exactly what happened there. Okay, let's try it again like this. Whenever you do stuff like this and you stuff these PCBs, you want to start with the smaller components first. That's why I did the uh, those other resistors first. And then I'm moving on to the taller stuff. It's just easier to handle when you do it that way. So we got that one in there. Uh, there's three more components that lay flat against the board. So that's going to be R2, 10, 11, and 12. So let's get those in there. That's these. That's again the R1125. So we'll grab three of these. Put the last one. I ordered, uh, how many of these did I order? I forget. I think I ordered 12. So there's one left. Somehow there's one left. I don't know. Maybe I ordered 13. I can't recall. But uh, this doesn't get bent right at the edge. We need to bend it right about here and here. So it doesn't get bent along the edge like they did here. So we can actually take this and put this right. Well, I guess they've got two different... We'll just do it this way, like this. Okay. There's one. These are connected on the back side, so you can put them in either hole. That's one. Two. And Three. All right, looking good, looking good. Let's get those soldered in. Oh, you numbskull. Oh, my OCD. Now, oh. see these two are in the, the inboard one, that's in the outboard one. I, my OCD is not going to let me get away with that. <laughs> uh, well, okay, let's just leave it. I'm not that OCD about it, but dang it. And if you want to, you can fill these other holes up. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. That is not what I wanted to do. I'm a numbskull. Let's clear that out real quick. Okay. Quick and easy. Okay. Trim all these off of here. Oh, 
All right, now we can tap these a little bit. Just give it a nice final flow. All right, so there's that. Now we can grab our, uh, well that's the last short component, so I guess what we can do now is let's grab our 6.8K resistors. That These are the R1075. And we'll grab three of these. Okay, done with this. And we are done with this. Okay, now we can bend these roughly about like so, and these go like this. And again, I'm going to leave these roughly about like, I'll say right there off the board, like that, and we'll grab this one and do the same thing. Oh, nope. OCD. Turn it around the other way. And last but not least. Okay, now comes the task of making them look good and aligned and all that. So we'll start with this one. Sorry, I'm trying to look at this at the, while I'm doing this here. And what I need to do is just solder in one leg of each one of these and adjust accordingly. It's going to be the easiest way. Now how lucky did I get? Well, not very lucky because they're too far down. They're, they're much further down than I want them to be so I'm going to heat this up while I lift up a bit and that's better, okay. So right there is where I want that. Just like that. So let's hit this other leg here. All right, that one's gonna be good. Yes, okay, that one's good. Now let's hit the rest of these up. We need to lift this one also slightly. Okay, that's good. Perfect. I know I said before it's not a beauty contest, but if you can make it look good, you know, why not? And this last one here, we'll just push on the leg slightly, like we did before. And that fell right about where it needs to. It's a weird effect there, but all right. Okay, now let's grab that. Finish that up. And we'll give it a little tap here. Just to make it look pretty. There you have it.
So looking pretty good. Now let's grab our, oh, we're done with that one too. And we're done with these. We're done with those. All right, let's grab our C204. This is our uh, 500 volt 0 0.01 microfarad MC1017. We'll have to bend the legs in like this slightly. Okay, like that. And then we'll put that right here. Like so. Now we can grab C205, which is MC1033. And that is our 1.5 nanofarad capacitor in C206. And this one we can just install directly. Like that. Polarity is not specific on these type of capacitors, so just any way you want to do it, there you go. Alright, and I think we'll go ahead and install our capacitor here. Shorter leg is negative. The side with the stripe is negative and it's labeled positive here, so let's put it in like this. Okay, and we'll get these three components soldered in. Again, leave your iron on the on the pad for a good three sec, couple seconds, two three seconds, uh, just to make sure that it flows through the via and fills it completely. That's good, no bridges, nothing connected. All right, um, we're gonna, because you all know me and you know how I earn a living, we're gonna do that. Okay, let's grab our color transistors, 2SC2068. We'll grab three of these. And they go like this. With the back to the back. And we'll do all of them at one time. And we'll put them all the way down as far as they can go. Like so. And we'll hold them in place. And we'll try and do this where it'll stay. I think we got that one. I think we got that one. I think we got... No, we didn't get that one. Let's try over here. And I think we got that one. Okay, are they going to stay? Yes, they are. Okay, now we can... Do, do, do. This one, we want to get this one over here. So that one is definitely in. If you run sure, you can 
flip it over and look at the other side of the via and if the solder has flowed all the way through the via to the other side then obviously it's good so if you're ever unsure that's a quick and easy way to check Okay, oh yeah, no problem there. Okay, let's cut all these off of here. And we'll hit that, hit that, hit that. Jungle boogie, jungle boogie. Well, all we got left is the are the color pots and the neck socket, and that's about it. This is turning out quite nice. So let's grab our pots here. So uh, again, these are labeled very nicely here. You can see we have oh. 200 ohms, 2K, 200, 2K, 200, 2K. So you have to offset these. So the 200 ohm are P1023 and the 2K ohm are P1050. So we'll start with the 200 ohm. I'll grab three of these. There are two of me here. And there are two of you here. The other me that helps the other you get back to 1985. Okay, so there's the... We'll start with the 200s here. We'll take all these and set them to nominal null position. Right about straight up. Straight up now, tell me, do you really want to set my potentiometer? Oh, oh, oh. Or are you just soldering stuff in? Those should all be the 200. These should all be the 2.7s. Do do you love me? Do do you love me, baby? Come on now. Do do you love me? Just to make sure I don't screw this up because I mixed them up there for a second. I'm going to measure these out here. And should be about 1k on these. Oh, no, I got a mess up. Oh, I sure did mess it up. Okay, so there's that's a 200. That's a 200. That's a 200. So I I didn't have them mixed up. I just got them swapped between 200 and so that would have been bad. <laughs> that's why I verify. Yeah, see, 1K, because they're all set halfway, remember? I just set them all halfway, so we got 1K and 900 ohms. Okay, so these are the 2.7, I'm sorry, no, 2K, and these are the 200. So now what I was saying was you have to offset these, so we take the 200 and put it in here like this. Then we're going to have to offset the 2k ones here so i want to put this as far forward as i can in the hole as far this way as i can because you'll see in a minute why we have to do that that's why i wanted to practice with the other one first we'll tack this in place here and then i'll solder it in permanently Okay, and I'll fill these other two holes here. Not necessary to do that, but that's just my OCD, so. All right, so now you take the 2K and you have to set it back. So that's what these, these two sets of holes here are for, because they have to, the pots are gonna offset each other, either forward or back. So when you do that, uh, you have to modify 
you have to modify the leg here. So you can see the footprint of this has to, I have to bend this back that way and this way. So now it looks like that compared to that. Not much of a difference, but enough to where I have to offset this. So now uh, it sits Wait a minute, did I mess this up again? How did I mess this up again? Hang on. They have to be offset. This one goes to the back, this one goes in the front. Okay, no, I didn't mess it up. I was right. So you have to use... So, okay, so this one uses the back set of holes in the front. This one has to use the middle holes in the front to offset it, because they're too wide to sit next to each other. They're too wide. You can't sit next... They're too wide. So you have to offset them. That's the purpose of these different sets of holes here. So we have to offset this to the front like this. So it's going to sit offset. So we just have to kind of finagle this in place and make it look halfway decent and then uh, and then tack it in place. I mean it's not... It could. this could be an improved design. I mean if, if you were to just simply take this board and if he was to redesign this board and make it in, you know, in a quarter inch wider this spacing here would be a little bit better, but you can see that it still works. We can set this in place, you know, twist it around like so, and it does take some finessing to make sure it's straight and all that. Set it flat and straight. I should probably, you know what, let's put the other, let's put another 200 in here. Hang on. It's going to be easier to just put all the 200s in first. Okay, there's the other 200. So let's just put all the 200s in first. It's going to be easier that way. But I want to have them sitting... Actually, you know, I, I should have installed them as far this way as I can, not this way. That's okay. Tack this one in. I don't think it ultimately matters, but I think with with the 200s in place, it's going to be easier to kind of get the 2K ohm and the 2K ones in place. So now that see now that I have those two in there, I should be able to set this in place and have it sit much better. Yeah, just like that, just like that. So we will solder that in. Fill that hole, fill that hole. Okay, and there you go. Gotta do that one more time, and uh, we'll call that done. We'll put the next socket in, and that'll be it. So let's make sure that these actually are in the right spots. We should have. This one should be 200, but it's halfway again, so about 100. This should be about 1K. No, yeah, 712, I mean, it's not exactly centered, but close enough. And this one is 93, okay, so we're good there. 200, 2K, 200. Uh, this one was our last 200, yep. So that one's going to go here. Okay. And we want to have it as far back as possible. All right. There we go. Okay. Now, we got to bend these legs again. So, again, the procedure for this, I just take my needle nose here and 
bend it like so. Like that. And that should go right down in there. Like this. And again, you might have to do some finagling here. But... There it is. So... Okay, get that soldered in. One more to go. Okay. It goes right there and hot jambalaya. I think that'll work. Could be a little bit better design here, but for what this is, it's still pretty darn good. Tack that in place. There we go. And So let's make sure they're all in there properly. We should have 200, 200, 200, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. So we're going to just double check one last time. So this should be about 183. This should be about 1K. Uh, five, well, there's other stuff in the circuit. Uh, this should be 200, or 100, 100, 91. Uh, this should be 1K, yeah, 500, so this should be about 100, and this should be, another, I guess, 500 on this one. Yeah, okay, so we ha we have 200, 2K, 200, 2K, 200, 2K, and the reason they read 500 on the 2K is because of other stuff in the circuit. So it's all in there properly. Okay, as convoluted as that was. All right, so now we just need to put the next socket in here which should line up just like so and we'll solder that in and that'll be it neck board assembly complete and I'm not sure if we can I'm not sure how we can have this sit flat so that's okay that's flat that's good there okay now that's all the way down. All right, just sits pretty good. Now let's get this wire or this pin here. Now this is where you want to leave the iron on here for a few seconds, so it flows nice and fills the hole there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. 
So again, you got the you have a there's two two ground wires. One ground wire goes to the frame of the chassis. The other one goes to the actual DAG for the CRT. And you can use either one of these. So there's a separate ground here. So I would use the DAG for the CRT and then the ground that goes to the the chassis frame. And that's all you need for those two points. And then this is the normally I say that pin that the G2 wire from the flyback hooks to, but you can just solder right to the hole. Then you have the connections here that I see. I, I don't couldn't find the correct part number for this, but you can solder the wires directly to it, or you can use a parts chassis to steal the connectors from. Uh, assuming that you're not just you don't already have a neck board that is in, that has all the parts on it, but it's broken in half or something. Assuming you don't have that, you can just solder your wires right through the holes. But well, there you go. Uh, complete replacement neck board ready to go. So everything is installed properly. Uh, this is exactly the way I did the other one and it works perfectly fine. So I think we should be fine. I'm going to clean this up real quick. And then we'll move on to the main chassis, getting it all fixed up here. I gotta turn this fan off, it's drying the alcohol too quickly. And of course my rag here covered in all this flux doesn't help either. I need to get a rag that's not covered in flux to kind of clean this or an area that's not got a bunch of flux on it. And it may not turn out absolutely perfect, but it's not an award show, like I say, but try and try and make it look good at least anyway, so. No reason not to have it look good if you can make it at least try anyway. Okay, I think uh, I think that'll do. Look at that, nice. Alrighty. Don't see any bridges or anything that uh, is disconcerting. I think that'll do just nicely. Okay. All right, now comes the real fun part. That was easy. What you just saw there, that was easy. Dang, how long? That was an hour? Holy crap. We gotta get our, we gotta get moving here. 58, 58, 50, holy crap. That was an hour? We gotta get moving here, folks. This is already an hour in, crap. Okay, well. Let me uh, cut away here. I'm going to cut away, come back, and find all the missing components. I'm going to, in the interest of time, I'm going to find all the missing components. I'm going to, I'm going to install all the missing components. I am going to fix the wires. I am going to take care of the uh, issue with the regulator, find a fuse, or use my circuit breaker or something. I'm going to get this all back together completely fully intact, get the neck board installed, everything the way that it would normally be, ready for testing kind of situation, and then we'll go through and test the power components and items and see if we find anything wrong, and then hopefully everything will be okay, and then we'll go ahead and be able to test it, assuming the caps are not bad, we'll be able to test it and see where we're at. So I'm gonna cut away, Come when I come back, I'll have everything that's missing installed, I've already gone over all the stuff that's missing, I'll have everything installed, in a, in a configuration where we'll be able to test it, put it on a tube and test it. But before we do that, I'll come back and show it all ready to go, then we'll kind of proceed from there. So I'm gonna cut away, come back, have all that done, and we'll see where we're at from that point. 
Here it is, all the work is now complete. Uh, there's a lot of things to go over that I found while working on this. I decided to go ahead and just do a cap kit. I had to do a cap kit anyway. You know, I originally thought, well, you know, we can get everything fixed and put back together and power up and see if it works and do a cap kit later. But I had to do a cap kit anyway because all the caps were original. So I thought, well, I'll just do the cap kit and the reflow and the rebuild and get everything replaced and put back together and everything ready for testing all at one time. So uh, everything is done. All the rework is complete that I normally do with adding the jumpers here for R101 and R89 and rebuilding the uh, header pins here for the yoke and D18 and reflowing the input header pins for the video and you know all the other stuff that's normally done but all this is all this reflow and rework is complete and done and cleaned up uh, like I say full cap kit I got the flyback installed, I got R91 replaced, I got C38 installed, uh, C69 and C36 installed. Uh, I had, oh, I got the horizontal hold pot replaced, I got remote board installed, I got the missing connector and, or missing harness and connector from for both sides installed. I got that from a donor K7000A, so the harnesses are installed for both of the connectors. I robbed a connector for here and a connector for here and the harness and got everything installed and wired up and I got the ground wires installed that run to the DAG and to the frame here. Everything is now done and we're actually ready for testing on this. However, there are a number of things I need to go over because I found lots of issues. So the main thing is that when C38 is shorted, now I don't know if it was shorted originally, but someone took it out for a reason. And I, I don't know if it was to rob it for another chassis or if they took it out because it was shorted. But usually when C38 is removed, I always suspect C37 in here as, as being bad. So C37 is this cap over here on the side with this diode in here. There's a circuit on some of these later K7000s that have this C37 right here along with a diode next to it. Well, it was reading shorted in circuit. I thought it was the diode, but it wasn't. I took C37 out and it was actually C37 that was shorted. And it's right here. So you'll see that if I go to continuity mode in this original C37, it's dead short, zero ohms, zero ohms. So C37 was shorted. Uh, here is the original horizontal hold pot that I took out. Uh, the R89 was bad. So I went through and did all the normal. I've got videos upon videos upon videos of the K7000 on what to test in the power circuit. And, uh, you know, if you want to know how to test all that, you can go and look in the uh, playlist that I have for all the K7000 uh, blowing fuses series playlist. You can go to there and check out how to test all these components. And because we're over an hour into this already, I kind of went, you know, did all that off camera. And everything tested okay, except R89. R89 is supposed to be 3.9K. Well, this one is reading... Oh, hang on. This one is reading... 4.3 K that's out of spec so I replaced it with a donor R89 from that same K7000A that I got all these other parts from and this one reads 3.8 supposed to be 3.9 so that one's much closer in spec so I robbed the R89 the R91 the C37 from the donor chassis along with these harnesses for the neck board and then I replaced uh, C38 C36 and C69 from extra stock that I had on hand. Uh, so that's it. all these bad components. And also, I, w I went to check the B plus resistor, and instead of reading the proper 180 ohms, 176, and it's climbing, I was reading 128. Uh, that's odd. So the B plus resistor is directly connected to pins three and four of the voltage regulator. If we go to pins three and four, what do we get? 467 ohms. Well, for 466. Now that's not supposed to be right. You're supposed to get in the mega ohm. That should that if that shouldn't have a reading at all. And if it does, it should be in the mega ohm. We're reading 466 ohms. So I think that this is probably a counterfeit voltage regulator. So that's bad also. And the HOT was dead short. So we had a blown or a shorted HOT, a bad voltage regulator, a bad R89, a shorted C37, and a broken horizontal hold pot. Those are the only issues that I found. There were a number of really, you know, crappy solder joints. Uh, I did replace the 
insulator for the voltage regulator with the correct one. I don't know if you can see it in here. So I put the correct uh, insulator in there. So other than that, uh, we got, we've gone through all the missing components that have been replaced. These are all the components that were faulty. So I'll set those aside. Um, everything is clean and ready to go and tested and it should power up. Um, I need to get my uh, circuit breaker. Again, this is a two amp circuit breaker, part number 7277-2-2. If you want to get one of these for yourself, that's the part number, and the last number, it denotes the amperage, so 7277-2-3-4-5 uh, is 3 amp, 4 amp, 5 amp, amp, and so on. You can see the little two right here. So we'll use this to simulate a fuse. Uh, will this be the first time that we have one of these that actually pops it? I don't know, but everything in the power circuit tests good except for the aforementioned bad parts, those have been replaced. Everything that was missing is, is now installed, including the, uh, the uh, original factory flyback. And we have our new neck board here. So, uh, of course, I did get the remote board, the extra remote board that I had on hand, that's installed as well. I actually have about six more of these that are actually missing the pots. This is the only one I had that had the pots still intact. I got about half a dozen more of these with no pots in it, so in the future if I need one I can just put some pots in them, but grab one of them at random and put pots in it. So, Okay, it's ready for testing. Let me get it on a picture tube and cross our fingers and, uh, well, I say it every time. Let's see what happens. Okay, well I'm sure some of you were screaming at the, at the screen there, like, hey, you forgot something. No, you didn't get everything done. Well, <laughs> you're right. I got all this hooked up and I went to go, you know, anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, wait, oh, ah, I forgot to fix the power wires there. So I put a couple of splices on there and put some 18 gauge uh, regular wire, on, 18 gauge speaker wire actually, but it's 18 gauge from the factory. This is 18 gauge, so I used 18 gauge here. And we have the actual, I don't have a proper connector, I'm out of, fresh out of connector, so I just used a couple of alligator clips that clip into the uh, power connection I have here. So that'll be sufficient for power. So, uh, yeah, let's cross our fingers here and see if we have brought this uh, parts chassis back to life. Everything's ready to go. We'll turn on the TPG. We'll just use the TPG for now. So right now we're just, cons we're just concerned on whether or not it powers up and doesn't blow the uh, circuit breaker. But according to all my testing, it should be. We've gone over everything, everything I found that was wrong. Everything else checked okay. So we rebuilt, the, we rebuilt the neck board in the same way I built the other one that works fine, so nothing should be wrong with that. So I need to turn this light off here, and uh, nothing left to it but to do it. Let's turn it on and see what we get. One, two, three. Comes on. Okay. And it works. <laughs> uh, I forgot to mention that Whenever you have R91 or R92 uh, out of tolerance or open, it's usually a sign that there's something wrong in the vertical deflection circuit. So I checked to make sure that the vertical IC wasn't shorted and no pins read to ground that shouldn't be. So I knew I wasn't going to have collapse or, you know, I shouldn't have collapse. But, okay, uh, black all the black level down, contrast all the way down. Okay, yeah, as I figured, I have to turn the uh, screen pot down to get rid of the retrace lines roughly about there and then brightness to roughly there contrast will go to right there each position roughly well we're way too wide roughly there uh, vertical size is vertical position vertical size so there we have a a nice square image, but we're too wide, so we'll have to bring the width in. And then we can adjust focus here. We need to see if we can get focus going here. And right about there is pretty good. Well, there we go. Look at that. That new replacement neck board works flawlessly, just like a champ. There you go. Uh, would you have RGB? I guess I, need, I don't want to speak too soon. Yep. Beautiful RGB. So we have a valid replacement K7000 neck board when built properly provides no issues. So fantastic. So uh, with replacing the C30 or installing the missing C36, C69, C38, 
uh, R91, um, the broken H hold pot, the bad HOT, the bad voltage regulator, the bad R89, uh, and a new neck board. We have a functional K7000 again. Oh, and cap kit and reflow and stuff. So, yeah, and that factory flat pack works great, just like it did from the one I took it out of. So, now what I want to do is let's let's turn it off and let's put an actual fuse in here before I forget uh, and I lift lift them right here and I'm gonna not be able to open this with one hand here it's not gonna be possible he says as he does it I want to snap a fuse in here okay that's done now I want to turn that off, disconnect it, set it aside, and I want to use an actual PCB here. So let's get all of this out of the way. Set this right here. All right. What did the dung beetle say when he walked in the bar? Who knows? Who knows the answer? If you know the answer, before I tell you the answer, put it down in the comments. What did the dung beetle say when he walked in the bar? He said, is this stool taken? <laughs> okay. Where does Captain Hook buy his extra hooks? At the secondhand store. <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't want to leave that there. I all right, so UMK3 is plugged in, do, do, do. and here we go, one, two, three. Okay, comes right back to life, normal, high voltage, doesn't sound too energetic. Uh, H position, boom, right about there. And yeah, we're gonna have to adjust our width because we're equal distant on horizontal position, but we're hanging off and we're hanging off. But we'll, Tackle that here in a moment. In the meantime, let's turn up our contrast. That looks pretty good. And let's grab our width tool here. Might have to use the short one here. And yeah, I'm gonna have to use the short one. Oop. So I'm going to insert my short uh, adjustment tool in here. And Okay, make sure you don't touch those yoke <laughs> those yoke wires. Make sure you don't touch those yoke wires. That will zap you. Okay. I need to get to a screen here. Do do do. Uh, and let's go to diagnostic tests, monitor patterns, crosshatch. Okay, so we're looking to have the green see how there's the green up here and the green down there we want to have the green over here and the green over there so we're going to try to adjust mm. my tool is spinning in there I need to get uh, a different one here let's use this one if this will let me, you know what? I'll have to turn this off because the yoke's in the way. So we'll move this out of the way here. And we will adjust this all the way down. Let's go right there with it. See what that does. Okay, we'll set this back in place. And make sure our power wires aren't touching. They're not. We're set back in place. Let's see what this does now. We're looking for the black, the, the white line over here and the white line over there. Uh, no. Down, down shrinks it and up increases. Hmm. Do, do, do. Oh yeah, that HOT heatsink is nice and cool. That's awesome. Okay. 
always check to make sure that that's if this gets super smoking hot then your high voltage is too high and you got other issues but I thought I thought that down shrunk it we may have to change out that width coil I'm on I'm using a or with uh, capacitor I'm actually using a dedicated K7000 tube and yoke here. I could have sworn, you know what, let me get something to insulate this. I've got the magazine here. We'll just see if I can toss this under here so we can leave this sitting out like this and I can adjust it while we're doing this here. Okay, so not professional, but it'll work. All right, make sure our wires aren't touching for power. Uh, can't tell, can't see, they are not. Okay, turn it back on. All right, and we should be wider, much wider. Uh, well, not too much wider here, but we're trying to get this to sneak in that way. And we're going to adjust the width coil here. Okay, so yeah, down shrinks it. But it only gets to a certain point and then stops. And as I go back down, it gets wider again. So we either have the wrong width coil installed or we need to change out our... I put the factory .394... Uh, I put the factory point three nine four C thirty eight in there, so we may have to change that out. So I'm going to cut away just in the sake of. Com I could just cut here and say, you know, you know what to do. Change out the the C thirty eight. Higher rating equals uh, narrow image. Lower rating equals wider image. So I'm going to change that out to probably a point four 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 seven something like that. I'm going to change it out to the next higher rating, and that should bring us in to a good uh, width here. So let me do that. I'll come back in the sake of completeness. I want to show it in a, actually a good, nice square image. And then uh, we'll see how it looks after changing that C38 back out to the next higher rating. Stand by one moment. All right, so I removed the original uh, 394. I think I, I think I called it a 0 .394, if I recall. Uh, I think I said 0 .394, and I'm sorry, that's not correct. It's actually a 0 .334. There you go, 334J, 630 volt. Uh, 334 is the factory rating, I think, uh, if I recall correctly, but I put a 0.474 in there. So, like I say, the higher you go, the, the narrower it gets, and the lower you go, the wider it gets. So we wanted to go more narrow, so I went higher, so a 0.474. Uh, our wires are not touching for our AC input, so let's try this again here. One, two, three. Okay, it comes right back on, and... Yes, jackpot, white line and white line, jackpot. Okay, I'll put that back in the width cap container and we'll put it back in up there. And look at that, voila. Parts K7000, resurrected, ready to live many years again. So let's skip past this. Beautiful. So all the color pots are in the center position, just as a, a baseline, and just that. I mean, this is a a uh, tube that I stole out of a television and swapped it to uh, the frame here with the K7000 yoke on it. So that's what this is, and it just with all the colors dead center, it looks pretty darn close. It's a bit too green, but uh, looks pretty darn good. Let's see how we are for width. Oh yeah, plenty of gap here, plenty of gap here, and we're dead center in the middle, so no linearity problems. Fantastic. So there you go. Uh, I do want to <laughs> leave this in a little better uh, professional looking manner than it was sitting on that uh, magazine, but okay.
Let me turn this back on. Back on. Okay. So yeah, reproduction neck board uh, built properly, works perfectly fine. Everything is great. So there we go. Uh, uh, these will be available on the site, I'm sure, at some point here soon. And so look for those if you need one. If you got one that's smashed in half or you just want to try it out for yourself, you know what to do. I'll link all the parts down below. And any questions, feel free to ask. Make sure you comment, leave a like, uh, you know, hit the bell notification so you stay up to date. Got lots more on the way. And uh, it's going to be fun. This was a fun one. Lots of stuff wrong, but we got to tackle. And also, uh, this is makes us five out of five on these K7000s for the repair -a So thanks very much. I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.